what, what in, ni in 89, what convinced you to go out on the road solo? What was the... When I moved to California, my dream was to do what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. I went there with the... Yeah. See, I had a band in New Jersey, a four-piece band just like I have now. Mm -hmm. I went to California on vacation, came back to Jersey and said, hey guys, we can go to California, we can work. And we were like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. And so we're going to save our money and we're going to move out there. Right. One by one, they all the changed their collapsed. minds. <laughs> yeah. You know, one guy, no, I can't do that. I can't. So finally it came down to, you know what, guys, I'm, I'll go on my own. I went there with the dream of doing what I'm doing mm -hmm. now, and I started getting these gigs as a guitar player. Yeah. And I went from one to the other, and I was never without work, and it always seemed like I was in demand, and it was great. But one night with John, um, two things happened. On my birthday, um, when I turned 38, mm -hmm. I was on stage with him. And I was thinking, I, I'm 38 years old tonight, and I, I want to have my own band. I want to write songs. I want to provide the musical direction, and I want to see what's going to happen if I do that. Yeah. You know. So that was a big thing. Was that that birthday? And the other thing was on the same tour, um, in a town in Denmark called Aalborg. Right. Um, Mr. Mayall got sick. And he said, I can't play the gig tonight. And the promoter said, well, look, if you cancel the gig, I'm going to lose a lot of money. How about if the band plays without you? Walter and Coco take turns fronting the band. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the night, I will announce, OK, now if anybody wants their money back, I'll give it back. So we went on without John. He stayed at the hotel. Mm -hmm. Coco and I took turns. Um, we ended up playing for like three and a half hours. Right. Um, Coco was doing, you know, all this great Albert Collins stuff, and I was doing, you know, Red House and yeah. Hey Joe, and um, we were taking turns and just jamming, and we had a great time. Yeah. We came off the stage, and there was a guy came up and said, "I'm from a record label. I want to offer you your own record deal." At which point, the promoter. John's promoter mm -hmm. said, well, if you sign the record deal with him, I'll book a tour for you. Wow. So it was basically dropped in my lap. Wow. So I had to go to John and say, you know, I, I'm going to leave. I have this opportunity. I'm 38. Um, I'm getting older here to, to just start a solo career. And yeah. um, I've been given this opportunity to make a record and do a tour. and." And uh, he said, you know, go for it, man. Give it everything you got. Wow. And he supported me from the very beginning yeah. and stood behind me. And um, he's a great man. That's great. Yeah. Now, I know another important event happened in your life around that same time, and it was something with Carlos Santana. Well, yeah. Um, that had happened a year earlier than mm -hmm. that, and that was we were playing in... East Berlin, Germany, mm -hmm. when it was still communist, and I was completely lost in, uh, you know, alcohol and drugs, yeah. and um, Carlos Santana came to a show, and um, he basically came up to me afterwards, and um, call, almost called me some names. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm like, well, hey, what's up with you, you know? And, and he said, you're in this famous band. You are standing in the spot of, you know, Eric Clapton and Mick Taylor and Peter Green. Yeah. There's a thousand guitar players out there would give anything for that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And you have this great gift, but you're so drunk on the stage. And this is what he did. He said, yeah. you're going like this to where you got your gift. Mm -hmm. And um, he gave me a book to read. He said, I want you to read this. We're in this hotel for three days. We're in the same hotel, yep. three days off. Go up to your room right now, read the book. Tomorrow, let's talk. And for the next two days, he and I had long conversations. 
-hmm. and it changed my life. And I went to John after the third day with Carlos Santana, and I said, "You will never, ever see me high on stage again." Right. I Carlos Beautiful. convinced me. Um, his message to me was. Everybody has a gift. Mm -hmm. um, it could be maybe you're really good at fixing automobile engines. Yeah. Maybe you're good at being a farmer. Maybe you're good at whatever. But you owe it to the world to, to take your gift seriously, to realize what the gift is, yeah. and to um, go at your gift and use it and nurture it and treat it with utmost respect and by doing that you do your small part to make the world a better place Boy. and that's what he told me yeah. and, and the book he gave me that's what it was about yeah. too right and um i you know sat and thought for years that music for me i had started off with that knowledge as yeah. a kid. Yeah, yes. When I was 15, that's what it was about. It right. was about playing and communicating and moving people. Right. But it slowly evolved into a means of let's have a party, let's do some drinking, let's find some girls, yeah. let's have fun. Yeah. And that became more important than the music. Right. right. And he got my focus wow. back on the art. Wow. And you have been sober and clean for how many years? Well, now? July the 9th, 1987 was my last anything. Wow, so are we at 25 or 26 years? I always get confused. Me too, 87, yeah. well, uh, July the 9th. We're in August now. Yeah, um, this is 12, so well, congratulations on that. Yeah, well thanks. Is the song Recovery on the new CD sort of touching, tying into that? Of, own, yeah. I mean, that, that is a very deep, meaningful, poignant song that for is, anybody. That's my story, and it's the story of a lot of my friends, a yeah. um, couple guys in my band, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'm very active in, in trying to help people who are struggling I with know. that, yep. and um, I can talk to them out of my own experience, That's right. because I, I mean, I went through all of it. It wasn't oh, yeah. just alcohol. I spent um, three years in Los Angeles, you know, yeah. as a street junkie on yeah. heroin. Wow. I didn't even oh, play man, guitar. Oh. And um, so I, I went through all this and I feel like I'm incredibly lucky and blessed and have been given a second chance. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I don't take it lightly. No, you no, know. no. Anybody who sees your performances, you know, from 88, 89, 90, right through to today, 2012, knows you don't take anything lightly. Um, <laughs> you know, I am I know that um, music is a powerful force, yeah. and, and I know that this gift I have been given, I can use it to do what Carlos said. Yes. You can make the world a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. um, so if I can help people kind of focus in on some of those problems with drugs and alcohol. That's what that song is about. That's right. And, and I have a, I'm 61, I have a long list now of friends um, who did not figure it out. Right. And they're all dead. Yeah. And you, you have a choice. You either figure it out and you quit or you, you're going to be dead. That's right. And um, so that song means a lot to yeah, me, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you very much, Walter, for your time. I know that uh, people who are going to see your show tonight and the, the videos that follow are going to just love what they see. Um, you are Thanks, a, real, Art. a real pleasure to talk to. Thank and you very much. For people much. out there, again, I'm Art Tipaldi. This is Don O'Dell's Legends. Tonight you'll be watching Walter Trout uh, as the editor of Blues Review magazine, the September 2012 edition of Blues Review will have a, a great feature article on Walter Trout. So highly recommended to read about Walter and also to check out his music. Thank you all. And Art, thank you for what you do for guys like me. Yeah, thanks, man. It's much appreciated. Thank God you. bless you.